pick up one of the newspapers this morning that has this in its lead focus as we look to engage in that conversation. Now, I'm broadly captured as the prominent story of future on the Daily Times newspaper is more on this development. Let's pick up the Daily Times together for the benefit of our, uh, our viewing public. You'd find the lead story beneath the Daily Times, Plan protests FG pleads for more time. Now, beneath that is the picture of the Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives and President Bola Metinibu engaged in a handshake. Now, and whilst that is the prominent picture, you'd find on the rider, Tinibu signs, Southeast, Northwest, Development Commission Establishment Bills. Now, we'll get some perspective in terms of what it means for the North as we look to talk to Ambassador Musa Mohammed Sokin. Now, you're the president of the APC Initiative for Good Governance. Now, in terms of the aspirations for good governance, what is the relevance of the Northwest Development Commission Bill to that part of the country? Well, all uh, government policies and programs are aimed at bringing government to the, uh, closer to the people as governments try to bring development in the uh, various communities. So uh, by establishing North Central uh, uh, Commission, it's a bold step to ensure that uh, the people of the Northwest uh, uh, get it uh, uh, right in terms of uh, economic growth and uh, economic development of their various areas. It's also a step further to ensure that um, uh, appointments are given to various people in that same community. It will go a very long way to give the masses uh, the ideas of uh, what the government have set for, to achieve for the common man. So establishing such uh, uh, commissions is very, very timely for the development of uh, the nation. As we have other uh, similar uh, commission like uh, Notice Development Commission and uh, the recent one that is signed into Law, the, 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 the South East Development Commission and uh, the rest. Now, I'll come to you, Barrister Mike. Whilst it is indeed commendable that uh, in terms of federal character and inclusivity, more regions of the country benefit from the development and delivery of good governance. But it's also at a time when there are discussions around the corridors of the need to look at the Orosaya report. And instead of increasing the cost of governance, can we have more measures to downsize? And how do we capture those different uh, assertions in a time when uh, people are also talking about healing the wounds of the civil war? Well, if you look at uh, what is happening in the country right now, you discover that uh, uh, you know, the question you've asked now is multifaceted because uh, when you look at uh, establishing some of these commissions, uh, Rasan has a report about major of some government agencies and commissions and other things that have happened uh, in this country. You discover that most of these agencies of government uh, you know, have uh, conflicting responsibilities or conflicting interests. And there's no way you can have uh, things working right with some of these things. Uh, uh, are not streamlined. Most agencies of government should be given their rightful place, uh, you know, especially looking at uh, the laws creating some of these agencies so that we don't have conflict in them. What I say as report uh, was a good thing that happened in this country. I don't know why it was not implemented by the previous government. Uh, rather, he was downlashed, he was criticized. Uh, some persons viewed his uh, report as being a section of target, that it was targeting a certain part of the country, which to me was not so. Uh, if we implement this report and make sure that things work right, the government expenditure will streamline and will government be more focused. That's the way I look at it. But when you look at this uh, establishment of some of these uh, commissions, it's not all about establishing the commissions. Like uh, Ambassador has said, uh, one thing is establishing the commission, another thing is uh, making sure that these commissions are uh, work effective, eff effective whatever they're doing. But there's something that is bedeviling this country that we must you know, look at urgently if we must move right. You can establish these commissions, but they become uh, helpless, moribund, 
useless and well, we won't want to use that word useless because they are useful, they will be useful to some extent, but there will be some constraints in their effectiveness of working environment. Well, like looking at the North East Commission, for instance, the North is highly endowed with so many things. If the North is allowed to work independently without some of these inclusions or some of these uh, interference from other countries, especially for non-Nigerians, they have come into this country because some of the crises we witnessed over time. For instance, farmers in the North can no longer go to farm freely because of fear of insecurity. And that's why we're having this uh, high cost of living or food inflation in this country. Some of these things should be that fundamental, should be neat in the board before some of these commissions can be established to work freely. Because you cannot tell me that these commission, these commission members can carry out an oversight function or on the spot assessment of the North East without fear of being harassed by bandits and other criminal elements. So these bottlenecks must be put in place or must be treated properly before we can the, the commissions can work effectively. And looking at the northeast, uh, the southeast uh, commission, for instance, the southeast at this point feels uh, threatened by coexisting as uh, the state of nation. You know, uh, what do you call it? a nation in the Nigerian state. In the south is you no know, based on uh, the language you speak. You know, it's a nation in itself. So, but if you look at where the antecedents. And the grievances that are, you know, that are in the minds of uh, people from that section, you discover that the commission is actually necessary to serve as an interface between the government and the people. To reorientate, to give them a new sense of uh, belonging. Let them have you know, this belief that Nigeria can work and Nigeria is for Nigerians and that nobody should be maltreated irrespective of where the person comes from or the circumstances around the person's birth. That is a good step in the right direction. Having signed that, some of these bottlenecks, uh, you know, frustrating the people of the South is properly taken care of. Now, the President has assented to quite a number of bills in his first year in office. And talking about reorientation, much in line with what Barrister Mike has highlighted, is the reversal to the old national anthem, now the new national anthem, with the hope that though tribes and tongues may differ, both the Northwest, Southeast, Middle Belt, and other regions of the country can feel the inclusivity. Do you think that this step in reintegrating and re-engendering patriotism amongst regions of the country can further be achieved through these bills assigned by the president? Oh yes, definitely. There is nothing that is as much importance as the integration and uh, you know uh, unity of this country. The integration is something that uh, is to be taken into serious cognizance, given the fact that uh, we are one Nigeria. Whatsoever affects one part of the country, virtually it affects the whole nation. And by coming together, it strengthens us both economically, socially, and uh, whichever way you try to look at it, from all ramifications, uh, social integration is very, very key in the development of uh, every nation. Uh, Nigeria is one. And all elements that is trying to destabilize this country should be disassociated and, uh, you know, contact claim from all ramification. So it's very, very vital, the issue of integration. Some of these policies that is aimed at bringing people together is very, very necessary. Much precisely of recent, the establishment of this uh, Southeast uh, Commission is very timely and uh, is going to go a long way to assist and also uh, cool down the tension in that region. And that is not going to help only that particular region, but is going to help the economic stabilization of the whole country. So these are very bold steps. These are some of the positive steps we are telling Nigerians that Asiwaju have the best policy ever for the betterment of this country. Now in the broad interest of our beloved nation Nigeria has been a move to reintegrate regions of the country that have some grievances. While there is secessionist in the southeast the Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives, Honorable Benjamin Kalu, is hopeful that the wounds of the civil war can be further healed by this move. Well, many in the opposition have also looked at it from the angle of the need to 
see the recommendations of the Stephen Arunsaya report on white paper in terms of cutting down the cost of the government governance while they're highlighting the creation of a livestock ministry and these two commissions as not actually in line with some of those recommendations. Believe me, it is on the basis of there's not much a big price to pay when it comes to the discussion of peace. Now, whilst this is the case, it is also off the back of the federal government's urgent moves to forestall a breakdown in law, of, in law and order ahead of the August 1st protest. This story is captured on the front pages of a majority of papers this morning. Now, let's look at three papers this morning that have their lead stories tailored towards moves of the government to curb or quell the August 1st protests. Now, in leading that discussion this morning, would find it captured on three papers greeting the discussion, namely The Punch, The First News, and The Vanguard. Now, from the perspective of The Punch newspaper, it says, Governors, ministers meet today to stop hunger protests. Whilst the first news reads, and bad governance, information minister says, President Tinibu is not an opponent of protest, but of violence. Says FG cautious because national protest risks spiraling into chaos. Now, on the vanguard, it talks about the matter being approached as a family matter. It says hardship. We will handle planned protests as family matter, says the federal government. Now, while there are some key phrases to pick out, the information minister is saying yes, indeed. Nigerians are entitled to their right to protest as enshrined in the constitution. But on the large scale of this protest, nationwide, is fears following the antecedent set in 2020 with the N uh, SARS protest. How does the federal government handle this matter as a family matter whilst permitting for protests and ensuring that uh, we don't have a breakdown in law and order? Uh, the federal government has the right to, to meet with its uh, lieutenants, as in inclu including uh, the ministers. But you can take steps to make sure the protest does not take place. But you cannot take steps to stop the hunger. A hungry man is an angry man. The way and manner this protest be managed by the government will determine what it will likely snowball through. But if the federal government, in its wisdom with all the security agencies, decide to guide these protesters to make sure that they don't go outside the ambit of the law, that will make, give, you know, I would call it a positive light in the protest. But if they do not do that, it will give room for people, hijackers or criminal elements to take over the process to enable them to have food to eat. Uh, according to Karl Marx and uh, Frederick Engels in, uh, in Newfoundland, they commonly talked about the Communist Manifesto. I'm beginning to see some similitude of what Karl Marx talked about, the class war between the half and the half not. But the protests, if it's not properly handled right now, if it's not properly handled, would snowball into the half not targeting the half to make sure the resources that have end over time, whether positively or negatively, is hijacked and shared among those who do not have. That is what I'm seeing right now. But it's, it's not all about threatening the people because they're already angry, they're tensed up. But trying to see how well you can manage this. But in doing this too, I want Nigerians to understand one thing. The previous government was colossal. Yes, because of its uh, policies, uh, administrative uh, policies and all that. But whatever the, pre the current president is doing right now is what, we, what I would call damage control. The country had become so endemic. The country had become so clueless. The country had become so directionless. You know, but most times people link this government to the previous government. One, because of the same political party. Two, because uh, the president, the president uh, was instrumental to the coming of his uh, predecessor. You know, that's why there's, there's no clear divide between the outgoing government and the present government. So that is what is happening. But if you ask me as a person, I will let you know that the, the endemic nature of this country, uh, uh, you know, is such that no government can treat in less than four years. Four years. The problems in the country now are so much that it will take the government four years to be on track. Now, President Bola Metinibu has real currently used the phrase, baby steps of pain. He's also asked for time. Now, Barrister Mike is saying it would take a minimum of four years to reset Nigeria on track.
Now, the hunger is not waiting. Uh, many are looking at it much like I said from the angle of the previous government still being under the same party of which you are a party stalwart. Now, you have talked about the initiative for good governance. How do we reshape this perspective of where we are in Nigeria in relation to the APC? Government policies, formation, and implementations are not something that uh, will be done in an hour or days. It is strategically, uh, you know, in phases. Therefore, there is need for people to be steadfast. Because there is no any country in the world that can be able to formulate their policies and implement them at the same time in the, just a year. You can see the government of uh, the, the, the President Bola Tinubu have come out with Presidential Economy Coordination Council, where principle and policies of the economy of the country is taken into highest consideration, given the fact that uh, uh, economy situation of the country need management, a holistic management and systemic management, considering the dynamic nature of the economies wherever, however, in whichever country. So it is in that regard that we are calling Nigerians, most especially, uh, most especially those that have contested for election and did not win. They should know that that is not a cause for this country to be disintegrated or destabilized. They should rather think of ways, positive ways of coming together with all their intended policies and harmonize, bring out their best of what they think is for the best of the country. I agree with you now, but the challenge now is in the way the message is being conveyed. You see the way you just put it to the opposition. Many say it's not the same way that the essay to Mr. President on information and strategy, Mr. Bayo Nanuga put it to the Labour Party's presidential candidate in the 2013 general elections, Peter Albu, where he said that he was part of those who are organizing this protest alongside the IPOB to disintegrate Nigerians. Do you think he would have better put his message to the opposition much like you did? Uh, there are approaches to uh, different scenarios. And uh, the response of uh, people actually depends on the manners to which that activities comes to them. What we are trying to say in essence is that Nigeria should also uh, always look at to prioritize the country first. We should have the country in our minds. The progress of the country should always be our first priority. So if you have that, a personal discussion between one person and another should not degenerate and call a kind of chaos or put the country in the wall of our, uh, uh, anarchy. Now let's get legal perspective as well, because we also see a lawsuit as instituted by uh, Mr. Peter will be following comments made by Mr. Bayo Nanuga, where he felt his character was being defamed with linking him to the organization of the August 1st protest. Now, in balancing this conversation, could the message from Mr. Onanuga have been better worded? Is the response from Mr. Obi as well uh, deserving of quite the gravity of the situation and what it could spiral into? It's okay. Um, I, I, I want to disagree in very strong terms uh, with uh, the position or assertion by Ambassador here. Uh, in my state, crossover state where I come from, I just came back from the state and I saw hunger biting very seriously. And even the people in my state who may not have had any, you know, ag uh, ag you call it, may not have known Peter Obi, decide to go on protest. This is because of opposition political party. I don't believe in that. And I have the fact that the Peter B has gone to court, I don't have any personal relationship with Peter B. Neither do I have any personal relationship with the Labour Party or any political party. But I'm speaking as a Nigerian who is not sentimental. Uh, it's, it's only a lazy man that will blame his tools. Given the fact that this president or this government is still very fresh and there's no way 
you know, it can uh, meet the, uh, you know, the earnings of Nigerians. It does not take away the fact that we cannot continue to either blame past government or blame op opposition political You have not been able to provide the necessaries, you know, Nigerians need at this point in time. It's uh, the previous government, like I said, was a colossal failure, and uh, this government now is trying to see how it can repair the damage caused by the previous government. You know, that is not to say that uh, we start blaming opposition political parties because the government has not been able to meet the demands of Nigerians, and therefore you, it is a propagandist machinery of government. I know that because I study political science too, and know that in cases like this, when the government starts uh, looking for you know, a new on escape route, they start blaming opposition through its uh, propagandist machinery. Good enough, the Minister of the Essay on Information, or whoever is responsible for that, is playing the role of the, what do you call it, propagandist machinery, where you try to see like a drowning man who is trying to survive. That is what is playing out right now. But if you have Peter Bito have gone to court, is to prove his innocence. And here, we alleges must prove. I'm sure that is what he's trying to establish. If the essay is saying that, uh, or another guy is saying that the speed will be investigating, right? Would that happen? In course of us, would have any business with that pop. Yet, some persons that I approached recently were very hungry. I knew a number of persons who call me every day demanding for money to survive or to even go to the hospital. The situation in this country is so terrible that people go to the villages. Forget, let's forget about the cosmopolitan cities where people try to see, you know, have various ways of survival. Go to the villages or rural areas and see what is happening there. It's so terrible that people struggle to even feed or to even get medication for their children. That's why the death rate has so increased, you know, even in our villages. So it's not all about opposition political parties or not uh, try to trace it to individuals or people who have lost election. I disagree with that in totality. Now, whilst there is that case of propaganda, assertions and legal inclinations to how you prove the face behind this organization for the August 1st protest, there's also the angle of the government being told to call the organizers and discuss with them. Now, and I remember during the NSAS, there was also the question of who are the organizers. Uh, popular Nigerian musician, Files, uh, son to legal luminary, and uh, human rights lawyer, Femi Fala and ISAN, uh, said he was not part of the organizers. Now, the challenge is with being able to name organizers of planned protests to help the government dialogue and find a way to meet their demands. Now, the House of Reps also has the position on the federal government's decision to dialogue with the organizers. This leads the story on our next papers. The Daily Trust paper and The Nation have more on these publications in line with the August 1st protest. Let's pick them up together. On The Daily Trust, you'd find the lead story beneath the masthead. Dialogue with protest organizers Opposition, reps, tells federal government. Dialogue with protest organizers. Opposition, reps, tells federal government. Demonstration may compromise peace, says the government. President Tinibu needs more time, says Oba of Beni, governors. Now on the Nation newspaper, the lead story reads, No to planned protest, similar to hashtag NSAS, governors warn. Do not overheat the polity. Oba Bini, give more time. Now the challenge, much like you see on the nation, is how do we know? The speculations and the assertions as captured targeting Peter Obi and his denial as issued in the lawsuit leaves the question open as to who are the organizers? Is this a general outcry of the public that is a faceless movement or are they indeed organizers of this? Hashtag end bad governance protest. Who printed the flyers? Who started the campaign? Uh, there are a lot of technologies on hand to say, this is the IP that generated the first flyer. Is there someone willing to say, I am the organizer? Can we dialogue with the government? How do we greet this discussion? Yeah, yes, I think uh, that is where we, are, uh, where we are here. We are all Nigerians, and uh, what we cherish most is to see that this country prosper. Any negativism, any negative activities that is going to cripple the nascent democracy is not welcome. And uh, some of these people that are call calling for protest, they are not doing it for the interests of this country. Because there is no how, as the country is, 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 it, it is, it, it, it is now, that you call for country, uh, I mean protest, and uh, it will go. Uh, peacefully. 
some other people somewhere will try to hijack the protest and uh, commit all sort of atrocities in order to throw this country into anarchy. So that is why we are saying no to the, the, the protest. Because when the protest started, you can be able to, just as Barrister have earlier said, you can be able to, you know, uh, stop the protest. Maybe through negotiation, mediation, reconciliation, and some other positive st uh, steps that is taken uh, uh, during a uh, dialogue. But when the protest started, you don't know the bad elements that would, you know, use the protest in order to achieve their personal aggrandizement and do all the negativism that is going to affect the country uh, negatively. So uh, we are saying no to the protest. Not is not because we are trying to, you know, a kind of uh, infringe over the rights of uh, Nigeria. Because protest is not against the law. If you would do it peacefully. But how sure are we that this protest is going to be peaceful? We have seen in so many countries of the world where similar protests have led to, you know, chaos and it has thrown the economic and social welfareism of the people into a serious and colossal damages. So we are saying no because we know the implication of that. Uh, now, now, Ambassador is speaking from a party stalwart perspective with the fear that this protest might spiral into situations in Kenya. But let's look at it from the root cause of the agitations. Now, demonstrations, much like we had in 2020, were off the back of the aggrieved youths who felt that they had been brutalized owing to police brutality and needed for the armed known as SARS to be disbanded. That was the cause. Whereas in this case, it is more of a overlapping issue with the cost of living, particularly hunger. Many households, not just one demography of people where you say young persons. We've seen market women in their 60s, 70s lamenting online. We've seen younger persons who are unemployed crying about how difficult it is to survive on less than a meal per day. It's hunger more on a broad aspect, not like we had in 2020. Now, the magnitude is more of a nationwide approach. Other than when he started in Lagos and we saw the metropolitan cities uh, also canvassing for the NSAS protests. This, what the party concern is that it would spiral out of control. But in attending to the organizers, how do we find the persons who are part of those who are giving it the flames it needs to, to foster and say, can we sit down and dialogue? Remember in 2020, no group was taking uh, responsibility for the and SARS protests, and many say that might have been one of the reasons why the protests failed to go on smoothly. Well, uh, you know, in a developing uh, world, a developing, a developing countries, it is uh, difficult or, or impossible to have particular groups of persons come out to say we are the organizers or progenitors of any protest because or probably the antecedents because we do not have laws in place to check meet some of the activities like even though protest in itself is allowed in you know in the world but how do you manage the, pro the protest determines what it will result uh, you know into let me give you an instance like what how, how did it happen in kenya it started gradually going and snowball into an uncontrollable state the way it is right now. Well, looking at the NSAS uh, protests, it started, you know, though they had used the police uh, brutality as a window to, you know, to protest. But it was out of control when they, some criminal elements got into it and started, you know, vandalizing things, stealing right looting here and there and all that, uh, looting shops and all that. But that had gone beyond NSAS. You know, we are not matured enough to handle peaceful protests. I don't see any protests in any African country as being peaceful because the government would not allow such protests to take place. And the cause of challenging those persons who are probably leading the protests is to further escalate into other things that ordinarily would have been preventable. As it is right now, hunger is worse than what happened during NSAS. If we allow this protest to go on, it will be worse than what happened during NSAS. Ideally, 
Before now, we used to have these uh, protesters or intending protesters write to government or security agencies to state their plans or plan protests. But because in most cases, some of those applications or letters were not honored or even granted, has led to people becoming faceless in their demand for protests. Right now, there's hunger in the land. The only thing we can do is this. I don't know whether I'll be allowed to navigate or to go into other areas not listed. There are a lot of economic indices that are not properly managed in this country. For instance, I remember vividly when the uh, inflation rose to the level in which it is right now, there was this uh, removal of subsidy that led to it. Now, if we allow, based on what we are, the assertions of what we are hearing out there, Dangote refinery to work, if the cabals will allow Dangote refinery to work, to cop some of these uh, over demand of the dollar or forex, it will further, you know, it will now stabilize the country economically. Why can't Dangote refinery work? Why is Dangote refinery agreed so angry with this country that it's now regretting to have established a refinery? Who are these persons that are not allowing Dangote refinery to work? Where are they? Are they faceless too, like the protesters? Can the government handle this? Now, is, talking is, about the government, government error, please. Please. Mm. We, we see that the House of Representatives is also calling for the immediate sack of the NMDPR chief executive, Alhaji Ahmed Farouk, over comments he made, despite the fact that we have laboratory evidence to prove in the, op in the opposite direction. Yes, I think what should be done now is for the presidents to establish a kind of a presidential investigation committee that will look down the trend of the issue of Dangote refinery and come up with a probable solution that is going to, you know, uh, streamline along getting uh, the best of how this refinery is going to go. Because this uh, home-made refinery, and by that, it has a lot of values that is going to give the country substantial, you know, benefits. So considering that the government have to set up a kind of an investigation panel or committee. Ambassador, I would like to get his thoughts as well. Now, this is what the House of Representatives and even the upper legislative chamber has done in the case of the NMDPR. But twice now, on record for the media, has been a disregard for invitations by the NMDPR chief executive. Now, this would be the third time such a someone would be issued following his latest comments to the press on the quality of diesel from the Dangote refinery. Ambassador is right in an investigative panel. But the issue is Nigerians are also concerned. Would there be compliance this time from the NMDPR? Nobody is above the law. Of course. And nobody can be summoned in this country over persons that were given the mandate to do this. And the person turns that down. It goes to show that some persons have become either overzealous, have become demigods, or see themselves as being superior to this country, probably because of the businesses they're doing in the downstream. Why can't we allow these things to operate? Why would the government be going outside this country, the shores of this country, to demand for investors when we can boost our economy and uh, boost our foreign reserve by exporting our own petroleum to other parts of the country, or to, uh, sorry, the other parts of uh, the world, especially to African countries? There's a lot of you know, misgiving about this. Somebody's not telling us the truth. The government, uh, the President uh, Bola Ahmed government, should stamp its feet against some of the saboteurs of the growth of this economy, of the growth of this country. And that is that's some of the things that are being pushed out there to show that the government is insensitive to the yearnings of the plight of Nigerians. It's only when some of these things are caught. Let us give Dangote, for, for instance, like what, like what happened during uh, the price of diesel was caught. That was the period where they started attacking him. Because diesel prior to that time was 1,700. But when he started, he reduced it to 1,100 and later to, uh, to 900. So why is there these persons are agreed? Because they benefited so much in the importation of petroleum products, or, you know, against the rules uh, the, the rules or the, the mandates of Nigerians. So it's only when this government stamps its feet, punish those persons who are not allowing this thing to work, take decisive action against these persons that the, 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 the citizens of this country will begin to feel that the government is interested in its uh, welfare or in their welfare. Now, we're going to get an extra paper coming in shortly, the business day that looks at the situation with Dangote Refinery, not just in the Nigerian perspective, 
but in terms of 90 European countries that would be affected by the increase in demand from Dangote refinery. But before we get to that, let's pick up the Blueprint newspaper. On the Blueprint this morning, beyond an alarm raised by the federal government, are also indications much like Barrister Mike has highlighted with the decisions in the downstream sector of our petroleum industry, also part of the alleged plots to scuttle the peace enjoyed in the country. Now, on the blueprints this morning, you'd find the story beneath the prominent picture of President Bola Metinibu and uh, the former Senate President Ayim Pires in a handshake. Plots to hijack protests. Unleash mayhem tickens, says FG. Now, now our focus will be on the strap lines underneath this. The first strap line reads, Count us out, says NLC, ADS, Northern Coalition, Tanker Drivers, Alleged Infiltration. The second one says, plans to pay stipends to unemployed varsity polytechnic graduates on the way, says Idris. Talking about the Minister of Information and National Orientation, Mohammed Idris, who made these comments through his media aide, Rabiu Ibrahim, yesterday in Abuja. Now, the tanker drivers' infiltration are still on the Dangote issue before we pick up the business day, which is just coming in this morning. Uh, let's get your perspective on this. He has said that if mechanisms are in place, the hunger indices would reduce if we get the refineries working. Since we have one working already, can we be able to allow it to Britain excel economically? Now, we're looking at this uh, comments from the Northern Coalition, Organized Labour, and even tanker drivers who are alleging infiltrations in their ranks. Well, first of all, sir, I want to discontent us uh, with the assertion that I have. Honorable Barrister, in respect of uh, the insensitivity he uh, mentioned of uh, the yearning of the people. Uh, actually, you have already you are mentioning here that uh, one of the senior stakeholders in the petroleum section have been sacked. It's because of the sensitivity of the government of the day, taking into consideration the, the consideration the yearnings and aspiration of the people as well. President Bola Metinibu is somebody who has a very good listening ears. And wherever such uh, uh, assertion have uh, been, uh, 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 you know, uh, bring, brought out, he actually listened to that. But I actually agree with the fact that, just as you have mentioned, if these refineries will be put in place, to work, it is going to reduce some of the co high costs of the petroleum products. That one, there's no two ways about it. There's no doubt about it. I quite subscribe to the uh, uh, ideals that whatsoever should be done to ensure that this Dangote refineries take off properly should be supported. And that is how uh, countries improve their GDPs, they support their home-based business uh, moguls to grow. By doing that, it will create a, a lot of uh, millions of uh, job opportunities and empower the indigents, their financial status, and thereby also helping the government to solve, uh, to solve some of the, 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 the areas that the government are to you know tackle so uh, i'm in support 100 percent that uh, everything that is within the power of the government to do to support the full operation of the dangote refineries should be done and that is why uh, we, i'm suggesting that uh, a kind of a presidential committee should be set up and a kind of investigative uh, panel to ensure that everything that is going to destabilize or distort or affect this uh, the, the contributions of a, a Dangote refinery in the economy of this country. I, I don't think it's only, I can't say, I can't limit it to this country. The economy of Africa should be definitely dealt with and uh, properly looked into so that the, con uh, the, the, the final to, will come to stay. So that is my perspective. In Sorry, for your information, uh, Honorable, I don't think uh, yeah, the man has been sorry.
fact. People were only clapping for his. Yeah, they are calling for his. Sack. Okay. The government has not uh, taken any step. Oh, okay. Has not decided I, on I, that I, yet. I heard him say. Mm, he no, 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 he has not been sacked. Calls for okay. people are calling for his sack so because of that. Yes, uh, if he have not yet been sacked. I think they want they, there should be there should be investigation first. One cannot just be served without investigating whether the allegation claim against him is actually true or not. There should be a serious investigative panel that should look deep into the trend and find out whether the claim is true or false. So in that aspect. If anyone that is found, you know, guilty should be not only sacked, but should also face the, the rights of the law. It's only by doing that and abiding by all these uh, uh, tenets of the law that we have this country right. Now, whilst we're looking to get uh, the front page of the Business Day conversations this morning, have also dovetailed into the need to get Dangote Refinery working. Uh, the Business Day had... Uh, published in its lead story this morning that the disruption in supply is also targeting to affect 90 European countries uh, following Dangote's refinery. And uh, it's more on the quality of diesel that is being churned out from the refinery. Once we have that uh, daily ready, we'll share it with you as we look to discuss it. But now moving away from uh, the prominent discussion of the day, ahead of a countdown to August 1st with the need for the government to act fast in forestalling a breakdown in law and order is also the current statistics as it mirrors the economic situation in the country now two papers this morning the guardian and uh, the new telegraph look at it from different perspectives with health implications and tough times in terms of the purchasing power parity of households in nigeria let's begin with the guardian on the guardian this morning you'd find that story tough times for poor nigerians as food inflation worsens malnutrition tough times for poor nigerians as food inflation worsens malnutrition 100 under five children die every hour two million suffer acute malnutrition nigeria loses 1.5 billion dollars of its gdp to malnutrition yearly UNICEF urges FG to introduce food subsidy, reduce taxes. FG stakeholders propose $60 million to tackle malnutrition. Now, now this has some concerns. Whilst these children might not be privy to the dynamics of politics and the need to ensure that this protest does not scuttle the peace in Nigeria, it's on worrying statistics about First, the death toll owing to malnutrition and the fact that some of these families owing to high cost of commodities and inflation cannot provide a balanced diet, which is the first prerequisite in fighting malnutrition. I think uh, quick measures have to be taken. And these quick measures have to do with uh, all the, our various representatives, even from the local, lo uh, local government, from one level to local government level to state level, all stakeholders, senators, House of Reps, governors, uh, senior stakeholders, not even quite uh, government workers, everybody have to key into this to ensure that he make his own uh, contributions in order to ensure that uh, this uh, uh, disaster is being dealt with. Because this is a national disaster. Uh, just as uh, uh, my brother here have said, the call for assistance every day to some of us that are here is not uh, is so enormous. Every day you receive more than 10 messages from different people. In fact, there was a day I nearly cried. One of the elder brother of my late friend called me and he said he, what he need is 1,000 Naira. Only 1,000 Naira and it's not once. Sometimes two, three times some people will ask you for 2,000 Naira. And these are family people with wives and children. So we have to stop buying these SUV cars, most especially some of our politicians. We should stop it. What is the name of buying a 200 million naira SUV while people are dying in hunger? We should just 
look at our come back to our senses and uh, prioritize our people prioritize humanity let us have that empathy of a human relationship we should forget about the issue of politics and what we must have to join hands on this all our business people all our work to do people in the society cut down your causes assist where possible to ensure that people are able to put food on their table government of the day is taking a you know a serious measure by providing all sort of incentives all sort of uh, palliatives all sort of assistance to ensure that they are able to deal with this menace but then it must be everybody it must be all inclusive it's a responsibility that is bedded in all of us everybody is involved in this check your neighbor have they eaten try to do something now whilst it, it's from a broader skipper approach that ambassador has highlighted his points let's also include the focus on the new telegraph because it also has a public health advisory to the severity of the malnutrition report as published by the guardian and uh, the high cost of living concerns now on the new telegraph beneath the masthead it leads that story with high cost of living public health crisis looms as nigerians resort to food rationing Many families survive on one meal per day. Manufacturers Association of Nigeria reveals that 148.7 million Nigerians live in multidimensional poverty. Common man cannot afford critical drugs for healthy living, says doctors. Well, I agree with you in totality, but Nigeria has not developed to the state where we have proper statistics. I don't know where they got those figures from because we do not even know ourselves or know what a family is facing as to arrive at uh, particular figures to determine or to you know, spread the you know, economic indices of this country. That's point number one. I want to shift a little to what uh, Honorable I just talked about. This uh, exotic flamboyant uh, living by some persons in the midst of wolves is uh, what has most times uh, triggered uh, some of these uh, crises in the country. You cannot continue to live in affluence and not just live in affluence, display this affluence in the midst of uh, poverty, in the midst of uh, persons who, who seriously lack uh, what to eat or drink. And then you feel that they will be supporting or be clapping for you. That would automatically snowball to crisis in the country. That's point number one. Point number two, looking at uh, the cost of living and the difficulties and even uh, you know, assessing uh, Medicare in some of our hospitals, that is so obvious. Drugs have been, the prices of drugs have so skyrocketed that a common man cannot afford to get drugs. Because this drug I wanted to buy a few days ago, when I got there, the drug, something I used to buy for 3,000 naira, they told me it was 30,000 naira. Who is, you know, who is responsible for this uh, inflation or this high cost of uh, drugs? So drugs presently in this country have gone beyond the reach of uh, the commoners or the poorest or the poor in this country. And that is why some persons resort to other means of survival, either they take uh, some herbs and all that, well, going back to the you know, mm -hmm. this golden uh, age of mm -hmm. uh, you know, the past years where people rely on mm -hmm. drugs or cook leaves and all that to make sure that uh, you know, they get well because our pharmacies have mm -hmm. gone down or the prices of drugs in our pharmacies have gone so high beyond the reach of the common man. But Nigeria will get better. That's my own optimism. I know at some point in time Nigeria will get better. But if there's no sacrifice by every Nigerian, there's no way we can get better with the way things are going right now. The house rents have gone high. Everything is so high in this country. So where do we look up to? But my advice as a way of uh, summary is this. Nigeria belongs to all of us. And Nigeria must survive. If Nigeria sinks, we all sink. It's better we see how we can. Probably, that's the way Honorable has said, be our brother's keepers to be able to make sure that Nigeria moves from one state to enable us to achieve the El Dorado we've all been yearning for as Nigerians. All we yearn for in this country is good governance, good governance, good governance. That's the only way. It's not all about. There's something you know, that I almost forgot. The idea of sending food as palliatives to state government or state governors, most times uh, this exercise does not really yield the fruit, the intention of the president because the process of distributing this food to is faulty. And I think again I want to I want us to look into 
is the aspect of insecurity in the country. Let the farmers breed, let the farmers go to farm, and then things would uh, gradually uh, you know, stabilize in this country. Once we're able to achieve some of these things, I think we'll have a leeway, a pathway to success, and Nigeria will be better for all of us. Now, Barrister Mike has hopped his points as he buttresses the need for us to be our brother's keepers, much as highlighted by Ambassador Sokin. Now, because of time, let's see if we can squeeze in two more papers and then just in passing, we'll remind you of the front page of the Business Day. But first off, the Nigerian Tribune and Daily Independent. Look at some of the key metrics in terms of the economics of uh, the numbers and how it affects the CBS decision to jack up its interest rates. Now, whilst the Manufacturing uh, Association of Nigeria is complaining on the Nigerian Tribune, the Daily Independent looks at it from the tax angle. Let's have those papers on screen as we continue the discussion. Now, on the Tribune, you see the lead story. Man, LCCI fault 26.75% interest rates. Man, LCCI fault 26.7% interest rates. It will further constrain manufacturing growth. We are concerned about implications on business economy, says LCCI. Now, the Daily Independent says tax on foreign grains will deter foreign investors. Bankers won. Now, you had mentioned that and would look to wrap up in a minute or two your take on this. The CBN is looking to fight inflation by jerking up the interest rate. Uh, many Nigerians are worried, much like the manufacturers. This would also mean that they would have to jack up their selling prices at a time when Nigerians are already lamenting. And well, the inflation will worsen because you cannot add more pains to people and feel that things will, they won't cry. If you beat them, they won't cry. You understand? So that is the situation where if you are increasing the taxes on goods, it means you're saying that the poor man should continue to suffer whatever they're suffering right now. That we, we cannot uh, come out of the situation right now by jacking uh, or increasing uh, taxes on uh, foods that are locally produced in this country. Or manufacturers will uh, grow and will suffer. And the commoners, or that we call it the consumers, will be at the receiving end of it. There should be a quick, a quick, uh, you know, board or any agencies that will regulate price control. That is very, very necessary. President Bola Metunibu talked about it, introducing commodity boards. Yeah. But we've seen some states, particularly in the Southwest, where most of their highly respected traditional rulers have dispelled such introductions, saying that uh, it won't work. Well, uh, it, it can work. I'm very optimistic that it will actually work. And uh, one other thing I want to quickly jump into before we go away is for the fact that uh, just like the federal government have always been, uh, you know, clear, they have always been transparent in their policies and programs in order to educate Nigeria on, of what they have to offer to Nigerians. I think the state government should start doing that immediately. Most uh, I, that would be a kind of. Uh, 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 you know, an approach to damage a strategic, uh, you know, damage control. They should tell the people what they have for them. If the people know of what they have for them, they will actually, uh, you know, be satisfied. More like a medium term framework yes, or plan? Yes, the plan of action they have, the short term plan and the long term plan and the middle term plan. They should be able to tell their, you know, state as a constituency that this is what we have for you, and this is what we have, uh, we, we have received, and this is the plan we have for you. So something should be done fast. That is, those that want to support that this protest, considering the fact that if this protest is allowed to stage on, considering the uh, projected colossal damages, they should be able to uh, call the attention of their people of the plan of action they have for the betterment of the people. Well, I must thank you, Ambassador and Barrister Mike, for making our time to grace the program this morning. We appreciate you. The pleasure is mine.